Hey, welcome back everyone to the brand new episode of the Code Draw. Today, we're going to see how we can place objects using display and position properties using CSS. So, let's get started. We will start with the display property, and display property plays an important role in controlling the layout of a web page. So, the display property is used to specify how an element is going to be displayed, and there are many attributes in display property which do different things, and we're going to go through them one by one. So let's open our project in Visual Studio Code. There we go. Now we'll open our index file and so the first property is block. When we use block, then the element always starts from new line and takes up the full width available by the viewport. So block is the default display type for headings, paragraphs, fonts, etc. But we can force block using the following snippet of code. So let's make an so let's make a group of elements which are not block and images are not block. So let's add a few images and actually just two images. So image SRC. Uh, let's add something like new.jpg. And then we'll just add one more new.jpg. Now we'll add a class of this block here will not add any CSS attributes for now we'll just save it and we'll run to check how it looks now so you can see that uh, we don't have any images of uh, new name so uh, we just have these two thumbnails here in the right corner of the screen so let's uh, download some images now you can see that we have downloaded an image and we have named it new.jpg and we have placed it in folders. So you can see that these two images are coming side by side. So this is called inline style. But what we want is that we want these images to be displayed in block style and it means that the next image should come in the next line. So let's go to style tag and let's add our class of disp dlk and then here we'll add our display property and we'll set it as block. So when we hit save, we can see that the images are now coming one by one in new lines because now we have forced block in the image files. So this is how we force block to any of the elements using the display property. Now second property we want to discuss is inline. So when we use this property, the elements don't take whole width of the page and don't start from a new line. It means that new element starts from where the last element ends. Span links and images are types of elements which are inline by default. And to force this, we can actually just uh, make one more paragraph. So let's add a break here. And now we'll add some paragraphs. So paragraphs are blocked by default. So we'll add a class of DISP INL inline. And we'll just copy this one more time. And let's say that this is a paragraph. This is second paragraph. So now by default, you can see that these two different paragraphs are coming in new lines and it's, it's not side by side. So now we'll use our class and we'll add our attribute of display. So let's make our class here, display inl, and then we'll say display as inline. Then we hit save and now you can see that these two paragraphs are actually coming side by side. So when the first paragraph ends, the second paragraph continues from there only it does not go with a new line. Now this is how to do inline elements. And the third property of display is inline block, which is similar to inline, but it adds in bonus that we can set width and height of the elements. So let's try that here first. So if I set width of this element, let's say 500 pixels, you can see that nothing happens. And there's this uh, yellow color underline here and if over it, you can see that uh, we cannot specify width of an inline element. So how do we do with that? To do that, we have this inline block property. So let's make another two paragraphs. And we'll change this, uh, this is third paragraph and this is fourth paragraph. Now uh, we want an inline block style, so we'll write INL BLK 
like that. It is similar to uh, in line, but we can set height and width. So let's add our display inline BLK here, and we'll add display of inline block here. So you can see that it is similar to uh, inline, and the third paragraph is followed by the that. And the fourth paragraph is followed by the third paragraph, and it's starting just after the third paragraph is ending. But now we can add width here. So let's add a width of, let's say, 400 pixels. Now you can see that we have the spacing between these two paragraphs, which is not possible using inline display property. So this is the bonus we get, and we can actually add height also. Let's add a height of 20 pixels, and let's add a background just to. So you can see that now we have this uh, paragraphs which are in line, but uh, the height and width can be set using the block properties. So uh, this was inline block. And now at last we have a property called none using which we can make elements hide from the page like they never existed. To do so, we just have to set the display property as none. And let's uh, copy these images from here. And let's add a few breaks here. And now we'll copy these images here and we want to uh, hide the elements. So we want to hide the images. So we'll add display none as its class. And you can see that again, we have these uh, images in inline form because images are inline by default. So let's add our class this of none. And in this, we're just going to add display none. So when we hit save, you can see that our images have disappeared. So it's like they never existed. And it's because we have set its display to none. It means that there's nothing there. So it's, it's like that. There's nothing there. Now, if we again change it to block, you can see that these elements are back and they are coming in new lines. We'll leave it to none for now. I don't know why, but yeah, let's leave it to none. Now, these are the display properties which we can set using CSS. And moving on, let's take a look at positioning of elements. So the second property which we are going to see today is position. Position also plays an important. The position property is used to specify how the elements will be positioned. There are many different position properties and we'll start with static. Now, HTML elements are positioned static by default and static positioned elements don't get affected by top, bottom, left and right properties. These are the properties using which we can adjust the positioning of an element. So um, let's add a break here. And let's create a heading here. Says positioning. And we'll just uh, make four or five paragraphs. So we'll actually make just one paragraph for each type of position. So this is a static position. And let's add a class of pause stc. Uh, okay, we hit save, and now you can see that. And now you can see that we have this um, paragraph which says static position. Now uh, let's add an heading here also. Let says display. Okay. Uh, now, as stated before, that. Uh, all the elements, all the HTML elements are statically positioned by default. Uh, so it won't matter, but let's add this class of pause STC. And it's just to say that uh, top, right, and bottom don't work here. So let's add top of 100 pixels and left of 200 pixels. Okay, and we'll, uh, we don't need to set its uh, position now. So we hit save, and you can see that there's no change in the position of the static element and even if we set its position to static there's no change because our uh, elements are static by default so this was static this was easy now moving on we come to our second property which is called relative and when an element is relatively positioned it can be adjusted from its natural positions using left right top and bottom attribute so let's add one more paragraph and we'll add a relative positioning to that. 
So what relative positioning basically does is that uh, it adjusts the position of element from where its static position is. So if static position of element is 0, 0, then using top and left properties, we can adjust from where it should be positioned. So let's uh, make it class rel. And now here we'll add dot pause rel. We'll add its position as relative. We'll hit save and you can see that there's no change because they haven't added anything. So if we don't add any top or left or right or bottom to attribute, then uh, position relative is basically just like static. It, it, it's at its natural position where it should be. So we'll add a top property here and we'll add 100 pixels or actually just 10 pixels uh, and a left property which will be 200 pixels. We hit save and now you can see that. Oh, okay, let's uh, change the text here. So uh, you can see that our our relative paragraph is actually 10 pixels downwards and 200 pixels leftwards from where it should actually be. So this is how relative positioning works. It adjusts the values to from its natural position. After this, we have a property called fix. When an element is fixed, it gets positioned according to the view board, meaning the element will remain in the same place even if the page is scrolled. So the top, left, bottom, and right properties are used to position the element according to the viewport. So if we say top 100 and left 100, then it gets adjusted from the viewport. So to see that in action, let's uh, add one more paragraph and we'll call it fixed here. And we'll make its class as pause fix. So now let's add our pause fix class here and let's add position of fixed after this we'll add top of 100 pixels and left of 400 pixels and then we hit see that you can see that our fixed property is coming at the topmost of the page and here you can see that it's uh, 100 pixels downwards and 400 pixels leftwards from the viewport so if we scroll down, you can see that it remains there only. And to straighten even more action, let's add a few paragraphs just to show this working. Okay, see that the fixed paragraph remains at its position while the page gets scrolled. So this is how fixed work. And let's uh, undo this. Okay, so this was fixed. Now the fourth pushing, now the fourth positioning property is absolute. And when an element is position absolute, it gets position relative to its parent element. So what this means is that when an element is position absolute, it gets positioned according to the container of the element. So in our case, the container is basically the body of the page. So let's add one more paragraph and let's say it's absolute. To give a context, uh, fixed does not get affected by scroll, but uh, absolute gets affected by scroll. So let's just add an um, ABS here. And we'll add a pause ABS here. So position is absolute. And we hit save. And you can see that our absolute position element is at where it should naturally be. So we can shift this using top and left attributes so when we say top let's say 200 pixels and left 600 pixels it goes here but we can see that it actually is positioned according to the body of the page which is a container of the paragraph and the major difference between fix and absolute is that fix is not affected by scrolling, but absolute is. So if I scroll and you can see that absolute uh, actually gets scrolled with the body, but fix does not. So fix is not scrollable and absolute is scrollable. That's the major difference. And the other difference is that fixed is basically positioning from window of your browser and absolute is positioning from 
body of your page or container of the previous element okay and at last we have sticky positioning now what sticky positioning does it that it positions the element based on user scroll position so a sticky element transforms from being relative to fixed depending on scroll position so let's do this and let's add one more paragraph and actually we'll add this paragraph just below relative paragraph because uh, we won't be able to see how it works otherwise so let's add an um, let's add in sticky position element here or actually let's add it uh, at top of uh, this is a paragraph example so like here and we'll set its class as pose stk because stc is already being used for static so let's add our class now pause stk and here we'll add position as sticky now when we hit save you can see that we have our sticky position element here and we'll just uh, copy this down and we'll uh, just make our page look like more filled and now let's add this sticky position element let's add the top of 10 so now what will happen is that this sticky element will uh, always remain on 10 pixel from top whenever it gets scrolled past so see this in action now okay did you see that let's let's add a background here so it can be more visible let's add a background of uh, black and a padding of five pixels okay so this black part is our sticky position element and see what happens when i scroll past this part here i'm scrolling this and when I go beyond this point, you can see that uh, that sticky element is actually not moving till we again bring back our scroll up. So let's uh, increase this to 100 pixels. And now you can see it even more clearly that when we scroll past the 100 pixel mark from top, this sticky part gets fixed at the 100 pixels mark. So this is how it's working. It's uh, getting fixed after it reaches the scroll point of the element. So this was the last property which we can use to position the elements in CSS. And that's how display and position properties are used in CSS to place object. And that's it for today guys. Thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel if you loved it. I'll see you on the next episode of the Code Drop. Bye for now.